One of the other great things to play around with in Photoshop is filters. So I have uh, two demo files or two homework files for you to choose from. Now, if you're in my class, you only have to choose one of these to work on, not both. Okay, in Photoshop, you have about 100 filters. So I'm gonna ask you to try out 20. So to show you what I mean, I'm gonna go to File and Open, and on my desktop here, I'll find my Chapter 7 folder and 7.2. I have two different photos. You only have to choose one of them. I'll start down below and drag over them both so I can show you those. And you have a photo here of some metal sculptures, just a ton of detail. Tons of detail works great when you're experimenting with filters or you have all these Christmas ornaments. Again, a ton of detail. So let's say you are not in the Christmas mood yet. So you can close that. You're gonna work on these ones. I've already set up a series of guides dividing this photo into 20 squares. Okay, in order to start this, you gotta make sure you are showing all of your filters. And the way you can tell is under filter menu, you should see artistic. Otherwise it's gonna start with blur, but you want the artistic showing. That means you're looking at all your filters. If you don't see artistic, you have to go to your preferences. So again, on a Mac, it's Photoshop preferences, or some computers might say settings. On a PC, it's edit, and way down here would be preferences. And under your preferences, you're gonna go to plugins. Okay, if this button is turned on, show all filter gallery groups, you should see the artistic. If it is turned off, you have to turn it on, make sure it's on, and then when you click OK, if that button is turned on and you still go to filter and artistic is not showing up like this, what the heck? I just showed to turn it on and now they disappear. I have to restart Photoshop, okay? These little preferences changes here will only take place after I restart Photoshop. So if I turn it off, that's gonna turn off the artistic filters. If I turn it back on, that's not gonna necessarily do it. See, filter and artistic, it's not there. So I have to close up that photo, quit Photoshop, and I have to restart my copy of Photoshop. Okay, I don't know why it does that. Maybe it's just doing that on my screen, I don't know. But just in case it does it on everybody's, that's how you fix that situation. So I'm just gonna restart Photoshop and you'll see right here under filter, artistic shows up. So now I'm good to go. I'm gonna go to file and open again. Let's go back and grab that photo that we wanted to work on. And then I'm gonna zoom in real close to square number one. Okay, the problem is if I take my rectangle marquee and I click and drag, the marquee is gonna go right past the guide. So what is the point of having guides if my marquee doesn't even line up on them? So I'm gonna click outside, we'll deselect that. And to guarantee you're getting good selections according to the guides, you can go to view menu, snap, to guides. Now these guides will act like magnets. Okay, it doesn't matter what color your guides are. My computer was just set up to make my guides green. Yours might be yellow or red, doesn't matter. Okay, you just need the guides to help you. So now when I start up here, I click and drag and when I get close, it will snap to those guides like a magnet guaranteeing I'm selecting each individual square by square. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back out and I'm gonna try one of these filters. So what I would recommend 
is you go by the categories, go under filter, skip these ones. You're gonna start underneath this line. The first category is artistic, okay? Regardless of which one I choose, it's gonna to jump to the filter gallery. So let's say I try cutout. This is your filter gallery. You see a preview of the filter and you have your settings. So I can go with edge simplicity, make the shapes even more simple, almost like an abstract painting, edge fidelity, really, really abstract where it doesn't even look like a flower anymore, number of levels or colors. So let's say I like that. When I click OK, and I click outside to deselect that square. I'm not gonna remember what filter that was five minutes from now. So what you're gonna do is hit D for default colors, and then you hit the letter X. You want white. I'm gonna come up to my type tool, and then I'm gonna set my font right here to Arial. So all I have to do is highlight the name of the font Type A-R-I for any font that starts with those three letters. And I'll go with Arial Bold. Okay, right over here, the size of my font, I want it to be about 18 points. And right over here, I want it to be centered in the box. And right over here, this is why you always have to check this, even though I told my toolbox I want white type, the tool is still set up to make black type. So I'm gonna click that and make sure it matches. Now all I have to do is center my cursor in the box, click once, and I'll type out the name of that filter. Cut out. I go to my move tool, and now I can move it wherever I want. If I want all the names at the bottom or all the names right over the center, it's totally up to you. But the trick here is you have to come back down to your bottom layer. If you stay on the type layer and you zoom in to try out another filter here, I'll start on the guide, click and drag down to the next square. If you are on a type layer, filters will not work. Filter, blur, motion blur, I get an error message. So I'll cancel that. So you have to remember, filters work on photos. Your photo is at the bottom. Now that I've gone on the first one and tried one of the artistic filters, now I'm going to go to the next category. I'll try a motion blur like a car just drove by really fast. Okay, I can change the angle, change the speed, whatever I want, and I click OK. Now let's say at this point my phone rings and I have to step out, I have an important phone call, and 20 minutes later I come back. And now I don't remember what filter that was. Okay, what Photoshop will do is under your filter menu, it remembers the last filter you used. So that's a good helper in case you forgot. So like, oh yeah, it was the motion blur, okay. Command D to deselect on a Mac or Control D on a PC to deselect. Now I go to my type tool, click, I'll type in motion, hit enter on a PC or return on a Mac and blur. If the word blur comes down way down here or it's not spaced correctly, you can highlight it, go to your type or character panel, and I'll just pull that out so you can see it right here. And you have next to your type size is letting, the amount of space. So if my type is 18, my letting should be about 18, or at least a minimum of 18, okay? I can highlight that and start hitting the up arrow, and you can see I could add more and more and more space. Hit the down arrow to make this number smaller. Down arrow on my keyboard, 
and you can bring them a little closer together if you want. But that's how you adjust the spacing. So you get just the right kind of read on that type. Okay, once I set it, I shouldn't have to do it again. Okay, space bar to move over. Always come back down to your bottom layer. I'll click and drag the third one. And now that I've tried one artistic, one blur, skip the blur gallery. This is for different photographic situations, okay? Skip blur gallery. I'm gonna come down to brush strokes. And let's say I try uh, ink outlines. I don't even like that. That was just a total guess. I don't like that, so you can switch. You could try accented edges and see what that does or try cross hatching or sprayed strokes or whatever you want. But I like that kind of accented edges. It kind of makes it look almost like a light or stained glass in a way. I click OK. Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC. Take my type tool. Now that the settings are already set up from before, I click accented, hit return or enter on a PC, edges. Always switch to your move tool and you move that down into place. Always come back to your background layer. And here's one other thing. I'm not gonna do all 20 squares. This video would just go on forever. So let me come back down to my bottom layer. I'll click and drag, and here's what I highly recommend. If you decide to go to filter, and let's say artistic, and you try poster edges, like, oh wait, I already tried one of those artistics. Let me close up the triangle and jump to another category. Don't do that. Okay, if you are in this filter gallery window and you switch categories, say from artistic down to distort, this filter gallery window will sometimes limit your choices. Notice under distort, I only have three filters to choose from. If I click cancel and I physically go from filter down to distort, that's a lot more than three. That's like 12, I think. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 choices, not three. Okay, so I always recommend you go to filter menu, straight down to the category and choose from there. So let's say I choose uh, twirl. Okay, I can twirl the photo around like a whirlpool. I click okay. Command D on my Mac or Control D on a PC to deselect. I click once with my type tool, click once on the square, and type in the twirl. My move tool will move that into place. And I'll do one more here. I'll go, always go to my background layer. I'll click and drag over the last rectangle or square. Now I go to filter. I already tried one artistic, one blur, one brush stroke, one distort. Now I'll go to noise and just see what these do. I'll add some noise right there. And I can lower that amount so we see a little bit more of the photo. Click OK, Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC. Click on my type. And I was talking so much I forgot what filter that was. So again, under filter menu, all right, add noise, okay. I can click, add, hit return on a Mac or enter on a PC to jump down to the next line, add noise. And I'll move that into place. So you're gonna continue that process all the way down. You always jump down to your background layer, do a filter, name it, Jump back down to your background layer, do a filter, name it. Jump back down to your background layer, try a filter, name it. You know the process. Okay, what you're gonna end up with, and I'm gonna take a quick shortcut here. What you're gonna end up with is a bunch of type layers. So I'm just gonna duplicate the ones that I've done right here. 
and just show you that eventually your file is going to look like this. You're going to have names all over every square. You're going to identify the 20 different filters you used. Some of these are going to be really hard to read if they're running over white or bright areas. I want to be able to read every single filter that you use. So once you have tried 20 of them and you have labeled all 20, you're going to have a layers panel like this, a bunch of type layers and your photo at the bottom. Okay, what you're going to do here at the end when you've labeled every one of them, you're going to click once on the top type layer come down to the bottom most type layer, hold your shift key and click. So you're gonna highlight all 20 type layers. You're gonna combine all 20 into one by going to your pop-up menu on your layers panel and merge those type layers together. So now all your type is now on one layer, okay? There's no capital T, it's not type anymore. It's a photograph of type, but you can still read it. Just remember, to the right of every layer in Photoshop, you can double click. That will bring up your layer styles and I will add an outline or a stroke. So remember, you always click on the name of the effect, not the checkbox. I click on the word stroke. Here's the color of my stroke. I want it to go outside the type. Don't put it on the inside because then it's just going to color it all black. Your stroke goes around the outside edges of the letters and you can make that a little thinner or a little thicker, whatever you want, just so it's easily readable. Then when you click OK, then you know you are done. So once you have it looking like this, you've tried all 20 filters, you've labeled all 20 filters, you combined all those type layers into one by selecting them and merging them, you double clicked on the right to add an outline, then you are done completely. You go to file menu, save a copy, and this will be your last name, your first name, trying filters. If you're going to turn it into me, set it up as a JPEG. Always on your desktop and always eight or high quality. And that's how you learn the power of filters here in Photoshop. I look forward to seeing what you come up with.